the horrifying story of two parents who were accused of killing their own son 28 years after he went missing. Yes, Doris and Charles Clark hit the headlines last September when they were both arrested on suspicion of murdering Stephen Clark. Well, the couple have now been released without charge and their story has been made into a new ITV documentary. <laughs> and Doris and Charles join us now alongside Mark Williams-Thomas, who's been looking into the crime. You OK? You OK? Do you need a minute? Oh, no. OK. Now, this, as a parent, and we were talking about this this morning, it is what you hope would be the unthinkable. And to remain strong over that, this long, long period of time, like you have done, is remarkable, first of all, absolutely remarkable that you're sitting here and able to talk about it. I want to, if you can do, go back to the day when this happened. So, you were out walking with your son. Yes. And then what happens? Just, yes. you know, a regular day, right? Yes, yes. Well, we... we uh, Charles was going to a football match and Stephen usually went with him. Mm -hmm. And jokingly, his dad said, yes, you can come to the football match if you buy your own ticket this time. <laughs> and um, there was a bit of a do about it, you know, we just... Because it was always a joke that he wouldn't spend his money. Anyway, Charles went off to the football match and uh, Stephen and I then walked along the beach to Saltburn, which is the next village from uh, Marsk. And uh, it was very cold, bright day, and we got as far as the end of the beach, and I said to Stephen, we'd better walk back because the tide's coming in mm. and it's getting dark. And he said, well, first of all, I want to go to the gents. So we walked off the beach along the prom, and he went into the gents and I stood to one side. And... Um, I haven't seen him since. So, did you just... What, it, was it like him to go to the loo and just vanish and disappear? Or it, it was, I think if I was walking with my mum, mm. um, then she'd be standing there for a while yeah. and, uh, and then she'd be wondering where I was and yeah. then she would definitely have been shouting through the door and then she would probably, knowing my mum, have come in to make sure that I hadn't yeah. fallen over on the floor. Mm. Well, I never thought that. I went into the ladies first and then I came out and stood and um, people have asked me, why didn't you go in? And I said, well, he would have been horrified if I'd gone in and t uh, to find out how... Because he was 23, he was an adult. It's not as though he was a child. I mean, you can still fall over and bang your head when you're 23. I, w I, w I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have mm. thought to do that. Yeah, really. no. yeah, mm. yeah, fair enough. Mm. I mean, but the, the, I did wait for a while. Were there other people around? Ma there were masses of people. It was a, a lovely day, like we've been having lately. Mm. Yeah. Very cold, but especially Saltburn. A lot of people visit Saltburn, especially on bank holidays, which right. it, it was. So this is, this is, that's it. I mean, for, you go back home. Um, Charles, you come back from the football match. Uh, and uh, at what point do you think, Charles, this, this, is, this has become an issue here? This is not him, you know, going to the loo and then having a bit of a wander and coming home late. When did you think there was a problem? I can't remember what I thought, but I thought something must be up somewhere. So I mean, I went out on the beach and looked for him, but the tide was... We, they'd walked along the beach and got to salt them just as, as the tide was coming in. I went down to the beach, which is next to our house. It's just 20 yards away, 50 yards away. And uh, the tide was right up. We couldn't walk along the beach. So I thought, well, it's silly to go to Saltburn when he, there's no way. So I got in my car and went to Saltburn and went all over the place looking for him, of shouting you, as a, as a dad would, of yeah. course. Mm. And then you can't find him and you never hear from him again and 28 no. never, years no. go by nothing uh, nothing 28 like years ago yeah. oh. never heard a nothing. word and then suddenly there's a knock on the door and you have um, the police there uh, arrested the fact that uh, you are accused of his murder they uh, it is shocking tear up your house they tear up your garden oh, um, what was your motive for allegedly killing him well, I, I don't think they really there gave, said anything about a motive. It just uh, there was nothing said like that. There was, they never said that at all. No. So there must you, you work with this case mm. in a murder. There is a motive, surely. Yeah. It is the most bizarre case, and I've investigated many, many mm. cases. 
they get arrested on suspicion of the murder of their son, they're interviewed twice, then they're released on bail. And it's at that point I become involved. And I spent 17 weeks with Charles and Doris. And I have to say, when I first started, I treated them as though they were suspects. Really? They were suspects by the police. So when we started to talk to them, and Charles and Doris will tell you themselves, I, did, I gave them a hard time at times. You know, you I did. asked them very searching questions to get answers from them. And I spent more time with them than any of the investigating officers. Right. And after the end of the 17 weeks, as the programme shows, they were cleared from all involvement. But what we do show in the programme is we now will reveal totally the evidence that the police have got in relation to Charles and Doris. Uh, and people can make up their own mind as how strong that evidence is. Mm. But I think what you do see is a journey, quite uniquely, of the impact of being arrested on suspicion of your son's murder 28 years on. And what that does, and they won't mind me saying this, to an elderly couple, what they've been through is an emotional roller coaster. It's heartbreaking. I mean, it, it, how you could possibly be in that situation at any age, but particularly when you're that old and you've lost your son. Mm. I mean, the, the, the tears that uh, Doris has shown, even Charles. I mean, Charles presents himself as an incredibly strong person, but we've sat and spoken quite a lot of the times and it's really pulled you mm. apart. Mm. How, yes. how, as I was saying before, as parents, it is every parent's worst nightmare. Your son's been missing for 28 years. Getting that knock at the door, which must have hit you like a bolt out of the blue. Yeah. How, how do you cope with that? I don't, no. I don't know. I suppose we're fairly laid back as a couple. Um, but when they, they rang the doorbell and I opened the door, it was, it was only 8 o'clock in the morning. They came without any warning whatsoever and uh, asked where Charles was. And I said, well, he's in the shower. And so I had to call him down. And he came down. And, again, we were cautioned and told that we were being arrested for the murder of Stephen Clark. Well, I, I, I think I terrible. gave a, a laugh, you know, a sort of nervous laugh, because mm. I, I couldn't believe it. Well, the... Um... I mean, we were, it was shocking, that particular mm. time. Mm. I mean, we'd spent 28 years trying to get the police involved. Right. And they never, hardly ever, they, every, every year they would appear and say, how is Stephen, where is he, and all the rest of it. Mm. Well, the, the, the police say the arrests were planned sensitively. A police station was open specifically for the two people arrested and only them each stage was prepared to take into account their age and any other circumstances, including any vulnerabilities. Those arrested are also given the opportunity to have a legal representative present during the interview, which is under caution. And the statement from the Cleveland police says the new investigation has been led by the Cleveland and North Yorkshire cold case unit following a review of the case. Each stage of this investigation has been planned sensitively and carefully. Um, do you still hope that he's going to walk through your door? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yes, because we we haven't got any. There's evidence no evidence at all. Saga. Otherwise, if there was, uh, we'd appreciate it. You know, I mm. wish I would like this program and whatever else we do for somebody or somewhere to find Stephen. I don't know where he is, and it would be lovely to know, alive or dead, it doesn't matter. You've, um, oh. Mark, you've spent. Um, considerable amount of time with um, with two grieving parents here. Um, are they murderers? No. No. I mean, I, I asked Charles very direct questions. I asked Doris very direct questions. I'm very confident that they didn't kill Stephen. Mm. The question is, is where is Stephen? There is yeah. no doubt somebody or more than one person out there who has information. I believe Stephen was alive in the days after he disappeared, but he did go somewhere. And in terms of the police focus, of course, is they're now calling this a murder investigation. There's nobody. There's no proof of life, which means that they've looked inquiries in terms of driving licence, passport, bank uh, accounts, no movement in anything there. I think the reality is, is that Stephen is dead, but the question is, is, is where and how they believe a third party was involved, yeah. hence why Charles and Doris were arrested. Obviously, as mum and dad, you want him to, after 28 years, come yeah. back through that door. No questions asked, I suppose. Right. Anything that yeah. may happen, f totally yeah. forgiven. Mm. Uh, on oh, the other absolutely. hand, if the worst has happened, then you just want information. You just yeah. want to be able to we know, know where he is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, although we haven't got an ending to this, we still have hope. Yeah. Of course. We've we spent 28 years every day looking for him. Yeah. Oh, God. And it's no different today.
Well, thank you for coming in today. I hope thank there you. is some sort of resolution for you. Um, accused of murdering our son, the uh, Stephen Clark story is on Thursday at 9 on ITV. And thank you. Well done. Thank, thank you. you. Pleasure. Thank you very much.